Alright, I know what you're thinking. Wow, Anel, I thought you were doing all the story blades first, so shouldn't a Geon be next? Well, I thought about it and figured that a Geon's guide might not be the most popular from a view standpoint, so we're gonna cover a cute girl instead with Praxis. We'll get back to him eventually, I promise. Maybe. As far as blades go, Praxis is probably a bit underrated by the community as a whole. She's near the top of C tier and is a pretty decent offensive blade with some good damage and skills. She's middle of the pack compared to everyone, sure, but she's also perfectly serviceable and still has some good attributes that can make her a decent blade to consider using. In this video, we're going to be covering everything about Praxis, all of her strengths and weaknesses, and how you can use her to have the most success. If you enjoy these blade guides, make sure to subscribe to the channel and look forward to all of the future blade guides. Let's get into it. Praxis is a quest exclusive blade that is of the Lance class. For a change, she can actually be used by everyone, except for Tora, of course, but being a Lance class weapon, you'll likely want to stick to using her on either Morag or Rex. I guess Zeke is an option if you really like Team Eyepatch, though. Zeke and Nia unfortunately don't have the best Lance skill sets, and personally, I'm going to be using her on Morag for the purposes of this video, since she comes with a great smash art with Lances that I want to take advantage of for much of the strategy and blade synergy in this video. So, Praxis is an attack class blade and suffers from the dreaded 5 and 5 defenses, which is tied for the lowest in the game among all rare blades. That's okay though, because she has a pretty great critical hit tier, reaching 50% with Moon Matter Courtship and a decent auto attack stat of 1468. Block rate is tied for the lowest, but that doesn't really matter all that much. Her stat mod is only 10% dexterity, and this is a very minor accuracy bonus, so it isn't really that great either, and because of one of her skills, it's kind of useless unless you're using other blades too, but realistically, a lot of other blades have a better stat mod than this. Cooldown is 4 when maxed out, so she does have some decent availability in combat. Stat-wise, she isn't really too special, but as always, let's check out her skill tree before deciding anything. Praxis's battle skills are probably her biggest strength as a blade, she has some really nice skills. The first skill is Brimming Pep. This will increase her damage by 20% at level 1, rising up to 60% at level 5 when her health is greater than 90%. Keeping your health above 90% is actually very easy in this game with just something like an Avant Guard Medal, which is also additionally useful since it keeps Praxis from dying, and she also has that very high critical hit tier, so this is a very easy additive to take advantage of to get the full damage benefit. Additionally, healing is pretty easy in this game from other aspects as well, so Praxis should have some really good uptime with this ability boosting her damage. All in all, it's an easy additive to hit and offers a nice damage boost to her. Praxis' second skill is the Awakened skill. This will increase her accuracy when at max affinity by 30% at level 1, rising up to 50% at level 5. This is actually a really nice skill because it ensures Praxis never has any accuracy issues in fights since 50% accuracy bonus can be very nice to ensure your accuracy is perfect if you're fighting enemies near your level, of course. No night vision or anything like that required. You'll never have to worry about miss inconsistency with Praxis thanks to this skill. That's more helpful than you might realize, but just know that this skill is pretty dang good. Praxis' final skill is the Awakened Power. This is just Affinity Max Attack. You get a 60% damage boost at level 1, and a 100% boost at level 5. This is the third time we have seen this exact skill, and it is still a great skill now for being an easy-to-hit damage boost when at max affinity, which is easy to get and maintain. Basically, this means that Praxis gets 160% damage from her skill tree that has nearly 100% uptime, which is actually pretty dang good for her. These skills allow her to function as a pretty solid offensive blade. There's honestly not that much more to say about them, so let's move on to her specials. Praxis's level 1 special is Foam Blast. It is an ether-based special. The positive about this special is that it is really fast. It's pretty much instant to go off, and the bonus effect can reduce all aggro currently on Praxis by 40% every time it's used. It might be decent to spam this special if you have aggro and want to get rid of it to maintain that higher than 90% health mark. It's probably one of the top 5 or 10 fastest specials in the game, so that's always nice since you can easily get this off, and it even has some nice area of effect. The negative is that the damage ratio is really low for a level 1, starting at 270 at level 1, rising to 430 at level 5, and only 456 at max affinity, which is the lowest ratio we have seen so far. It has no special modifier and is only a single hit, making it bad for chain attacks even if it is fast. The aggro reduction effect also may not be the most useful much of the time when aggro isn't a major factor or other characters have ways to keep aggro. All in all, it is a decent special even if the damage isn't really there. Praxis' level 2 special is Geyser Spring. It is another pretty fast ether-based single-hit special, just like the level 1. 
It isn't quite as fast, but it's still up there and it's probably one of the fastest level 2 specials in the game. The damage ratio is also a bit better than her level 1, being about average, starting at 400 at level 1, rising to 560 at level 5, and being 609 at max affinity. It has the same weakness of not being great in chain attacks, and as a whole, Praxis is a pretty bad blade for chain attacks, but that is okay. There are still things Praxis has going for her besides that. Specials with speed are still nice, and the bonus effect of annulling guard is decent enough to make sure no damage from this ever gets blocked. Unfortunately, it has no critical modifier or anything like that, though. Practice's level 3 special is Fierce Deluge. We changed things up a bit here. This is a physical special that is 9 hits. It once again has no special modifier to anything, and it is a below average damage ratio of 500 level 1, 660 at level 5, and 680 at max affinity, which is a bit unfortunate, but fortunately, the special effect is pretty decent this time around, increasing damage from the side by 150%. Positional effects in this game are applied from where the ability was cast, so you only need to run to the side of the enemy to get this effect no matter where the enemy is when you actually hit some of the attacks on him. That's nice to give this special a decent bonus to its damage dealt. If you're using a 3 round chain attack or something, this could be good for that, but realistically, Praxis still isn't a great blade for chain attacks. Praxis's level 4 special is Torrential Pain. Now, despite the cool name and the general strengths of a level 4 of easy fusion setups from freezing driver combos and invincibility, this level 4 kinda got screwed over. Its damage ratio is only 900 total, which is among the lowest in the entire game. I don't really understand why it's so low, but that makes it not as impactful as it otherwise could be since most level 4s are over 1000 in damage ratio. It at least has a 40% critical modifier, which is nice for getting those critical hits, but all around this level 4 could definitely be better. Its bonus effect is at least increasing damage by 150% from the side, just like her level 3, so you can boost the damage easy enough that way, but the ratio being so low for a level 4 kinda sucks. All in all, her specials aren't the most impressive, with typically lower ratios on them and no special damage modifiers, but she does have speed going for her at the very least on her level 1 and level 2. The courtship here should be pretty obvious. Moon Matter is by far the best option for the highest possible critical hit rate and a good auto attack stat. Tachyon just doesn't have a useful effect here, really. For Ox Core, Praxis is an unfortunate blade in that she only gets one Ox Core slot, which is another weakness of hers, sadly. Affinity Max Attack is the obvious choice at the very least to boost her damage even further at max affinity, and I don't really recommend running anything else here since her skill tree covers any possible accuracy issues, thankfully. For accessories, Avant Guard Metal is an obvious choice to keep yourself healthy with the high critical hit rate Praxis has, and the fact that you want the damage bonus from being above 90% health as much as possible. I wouldn't recommend dropping this unless you're just not planning to ever get hit, or have a reliable dedicated healer that can keep you above 90%. Crimson Headband is also an obvious option since you have a lot of added to damage from her skill tree in Ox Core, and this will boost her critical damage as an independent multiplier. She'll be getting a lot of critical hits, so that's very helpful. For the final accessory, I am going to be using a Noise Dampener. I think Praxis can do very well as a more arts-based focused Lance user, since her specials aren't the greatest and she has some good synergy with Blaze that can help her out in this department, along with a great Smash Art on Morag. Noise Dampener will increase damage ratios on all of her arts, making it a great boost to all arts damage. Abyss Mask is a decent option for general damage boosts, but always be careful about taking more damage. For pouch items, Praxis is lucky enough to like desserts, so you can cap her out on Art Recharge very easily. Lance Arts on Morag have pretty good cooldowns and effects, so this can ensure a lot of uptime on Arts, and I, I'm also planning on running Elma on an ally for Overdrive to help out Praxis here, since chain attacks aren't really her strength. That reduced Art cooldown will ensure Praxis can spam Arts if needed. I'm also planning to run Driver Combo Support because I want to smash as much as I can. Let's get into the practical use for Praxis. So as mentioned, I'm going to focus on a bit of a different strategy than I probably showed off so far. We're going to have Elma using Overdrive here, so we're going to be having nearly max party meter at the start of battle. That was actually unintentional, believe it or not, so we'll wait a little bit before acti activating Overdrive. I've also got Dagas and Adenine both on Zeke, so he has two ways to topple, and of course I have Tor using the break and launch combination he is so good at doing. And now we have Overdrive active, and what I want to do is get to my level 3 special, because that one has 9 hits, and wouldn't you know that having more hits for Overdrive is very good. The smash damage we can do is very high as well, you just saw 837,000 there without having any, like, damage multipliers yet. And you can just kind of take advantage of, um, this kind of stuff to get a lot of damage, we're already at damage cap now. 
The Noise Dampener is helping our arts doing more damage. Twin Dragons has a bonus effect if you have high HP, which synergizes incredibly well with practice. So you can get quite a bit of good things going here. Naturally, something like Pernicious Benth is not going to be enough to actually show off the full capabilities of Praxis because he's kind of a... I know he's technically a super boss, but he's kind of weak even on normal mode. So we'll have to get it. We'll have to get a real challenge here in just a second. Smash damage again, just showing how you can easily kind of destroy every enemy. We're going to do kind of a similar strategy, except we're going to fight the highest health enemy in the game now, Cloud Sea King on um, normal mode. And we're going to be doing the challenge mode version. He has really high defenses, 50 million health. And, um, yeah, we're going to see what we can do here using kind of a similar strategy. We're going to be trying to get our um, party meter up as fast as possible. And I get toppled here because I am bad, but that's okay. It doesn't really matter that much. We can keep ourselves healthy with the Avant Guard Metal, even despite not having a healer here. And before using any special, I'm going to try to get the maxed out party meter so we can instantly get a decent overdrive count once we can activate overdrive. So, now we activate Overdrive, we are able to use our special here, it's gonna... Ken is gonna fall during this special, I believe, but that's okay, because we can just... Get our Overdrive count up, we got 35 count from that special, thankfully, and every hit of an art's gonna add one more count. And you're able to see here, I'm able to cancel more Ag's arts basically into themselves at this point, which is very nice, having Overdrive active. I think the cooldowns are normally like 6, 8, and 8 at max affinity, but with Overdrive, it doesn't really matter that much with the Art Recharge Party Meter. Art Recharge Pouch Items, I mean, not Party Meter. <laughs> and continuing to use high hit count specials is going to increase the Overdrive count even further. One good thing about Elma is that her level 3 is 16 hits, so I can easily use her when the um, Water Water Dark combo and get another 80 count on my Overdrive, which is very nice. Because that's going to increase all of our damage even further, it's going to make our break chance even better, and it's going to increase our arc cooldowns even further, so we can just go from Spiral Uppercut to Twin Dragon as much as we possibly want to. And you can see here, Prax is actually putting out a pretty decent amount of damage once Overdrive's stacked up. We got Noise Dampener and Crimson Headband, of course, independent multipliers, but the damage bonus from Overdrive is added to our added to damage total, so that is um, not an independent multiplier for that. That's why the Noise Dampener and Crimson Headband are especially useful, because they give us quite a bit of damage on our arts, even against a high health enemy that has a bunch of defense. Now, I don't really want to use Splash Hazard, because that'll put a Water Orb on him and make him take reduced damage from Praxis entirely. So we're going to try to avoid doing that until he gets a bit lower on health. Venom Water, of course, is fine. And, of course, getting that Overdrive count up is very nice, so the level... Four and the level 3 are going to add a decent amount of count to that, so those are going to be the specials I focus on for the most part. We've already got a decent count though, so I'm able to just easily do um, some art chaining here to get a lot of decent damage out of that as well. Adenine and Dagas can keep him toppled, and when Dagas is out, they gave an additional damage bonus while he is active. And then besides that, all I gotta do is remember to refresh Overdrive like once every 60 seconds or so, and we're just fine. Every time we can get a smash in, that's another damage cap there, so smashing's really good. And even this high health enemy with a lot of defenses in challenge mode is going to eventually go down with our current strategy. We don't need any chain attacks, we can just focus on using Overdrive and focus on um, killing it with practice as efficiently as we can. Now, it's entirely possible with chain attacks you could kill faster, but we're trying to rely mostly on the damage of practice herself, so we're going to do it this way instead. That's a little bit more fun to me, don't you guys think? Now, I do think I actually make one minor, like, mistake here, not paying attention to Zeke's health. It doesn't end up mattering all that much, but he does end up dying because of the spike damage. He doesn't actually have any way to heal, and if I was smart, I would have been collecting potions during part of this, but... Once I realize that he's low on health, I'm like too far away from potions to actually collect. Doesn't matter though, I didn't even bother to revive him because I was just like, you know what, I can finish this without Zeke. I, I can do this. And um, you know what, we ended up doing it, so it doesn't even matter. But you can see Zeke's low on health, I was, I literally probably just now noticed and... We're just getting all our smashes in, so it doesn't really matter. And even if we don't have Zeke for topple or anything like that, it doesn't matter because Praxis and Tora can handle this by themselves. We got that crit healing to keep ourselves healthy, even if we can't topple him anymore, so it doesn't even matter. It does not matter at all. And at this point, our overdrive counter is so high, we have quite a bit of additional damage here as well, which is actually really nice. 
So Praxis is doing quite a bit of damage with Twin Dragons. Um, you can see when we're actually at full health, when we don't get lowered to one health, that's doing quite a bit of damage on each hit with a high health bonus. Crown Splitter does a decent amount because it has a really high damage ratio. Spiral Uppercut does a pretty fast and decent art to use. So we're having a good time here. I use my level 4 here, Splash Hazard, finally, just to not get hit with the Tentacle Storm. Because that could have um, potentially been bad. So Invincibility Frames are always nice for the level 4 specials. We get a decent damage cap there. That's a decent chunk. I go ahead and use Tor Special here. And that's going to give us a decent amount of extra damage as well. And now he's finally close to almost dead, so we can just finish this fight off really simply here. Even when we get low on health, the metal keeps us healthy by just giving us some crits. I use my level 4 one more time. It's not actually part of any combo, but I'm just getting the last little overdrive bonus here. I probably should have saved this just in case, but not really a big deal because um, we're able to finish him off pretty easily. Now we do have to finish off the other enemies after this. Just the little bit of extra challenge here. But Ken's going to go down pretty quickly, as you can imagine, and, um, yeah. Now we just deal with the Alagos. He spawned, they actually have massive physical defense, so we have to use an Aether attack to kill them, which is pretty funny. But that's basically the fight. That is the Overdrive Praxis fight. That is a fun way to use Praxis if you don't want to focus on chain attacking to take advantage of her arch damage and her ability to smash very efficiently. So I think she's a decent enough blade. She's got some pretty good capabilities for an offensive blade, and I think she's a bit underrated because I never really see anyone using her besides just commenting on how cute she is. But yeah, Praxis is not a bad blade, and I hope you guys learned how to use her properly by watching this video. As usual, if you enjoyed my content, please be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and anything else that will support me. And as always, thank you all so much for watching, and have a wonderful day.